tire next week trying to figure out what to shoot for the next video. So there I was last night staring around trying to figure out what to work on. And I guess I decided that we're going to do an AHM. We're going to do this Mahano Mikado from former Yugoslavia. We haven't done one of those, I don't think ever. Let's get to the cabin and let's see what we can do about getting this thing whooped into shape. I had too much fun with that intro. I thought about that this morning while I was waiting for breakfast. I thought I should do something different. So I did. But anyway, let's take a look at this. Let's get in on it. Take it apart, root around. First time I've ever taken one of these apart. So we're gonna do this together at the same time. Looks like we've got a tender picking up the juices because we got these pickups here on the wheels. Probably go through this drawbar right here for the power. Found this old dirty cloth laying on the floor by the dog. Figured I'd bring it up here to protect the paint on this locomotive. I'm going to say probably this screw back here. It's going to do something or it won't do anything at all. Okay. Because we got to get the back of the boiler off. You know, there's a screw right there for the front. I'm going to take these pilot trucks off here. Truck, trucks, wheel set. This part, what do we got? We got that, we got that. And we even got a little spring to help hold it down while it's bumping around the turnouts. Very nice. Get my hat off here so I don't accidentally block the view like I've sometimes been known to do. This is tight. This has got that sensation like it's stripping out all the threads as you're pulling it out of the plastic is what it feels like. I can tell it's doing something. It's getting looser, but ooh, did that one make me a little on the nervous side? Yes. Keep, yes, okay. What does this do? Is that gonna stay there? Feels like it. Can we get to the inside yet? Oh, look at that. There's a screw back there. I knew there was something back on the back. I just didn't know where it was. Get that fella out of there. Now what can we do? I really, I really wanted more than this. Oh, what's... No, that just fell out. Ugh. I'm fighting with whatever's taking place back here. Oh. Oh. Hey, it's got a... It's got a smoker in it. That'll be dinged. I'm gonna guess that was probably sitting right there. Well, the smoker ain't gonna do much chugging. Got a nice semi-can... Nope. It's not really a can motor at all because here's the commutators. The brushes are just right inside there. So, ain't that a bugger. One gear case, worm gear coming in right there. One big gear here. Let's take this out so we can get down in there and see what is going on. More out. Oh, look at that. It's got metal, metal axles. It's driving just the one gear. And then of course with the side rods, that's what drives everything else. It's an insulator. One of these wheels is insulated because it's going to pick up half from the locomotive, half from the tender. Let's see what half is picking up. No? No. Well, that's... I'm not... I'm not getting any continuity anywhere on anything. This I find interesting where, you know what? Here's a side motor mount. No. Here's a side motor mount. No. Does it have wipers behind this? It's gotta be doing something. Here they are, right there. You can see the wiper there, there, okay. 
here's a wiper going to this pickup here and there you can see it right there on the front wheel also the juices are being picked up from the flanges and i hope i didn't tear that other one up putting it in there there ain't much a guy needs to do to service these i can feel it in my bones that this isn't going to be a really long video this ain't going to be one of them them bachman gear videos that it takes me three days to shoot i got stories that i wanted to share with you and I think this is a good time because I wouldn't be able to get it to fit in this video. Here in 1983, I took the first half of this half of the picture. Shows me with my layout back in the day when I was just a little tyke. Would have been my junior high years. And I supported that railroad with a 10-speed bicycle that I delivered papers on. That's how I made my money to go to this place called Doc's Hobby Shop out in Golden, Colorado to buy all my stuff. Well, the nice thing about railroading is that you get to relive... All your childhood memories, the good ones, not the bad ones. We don't want, yeah, you know, those happen at nighttime in our dreams and they're called nightmares, but the good ones. I've also been able to get, not the first bike I have, but it sure looks a lot like it, yellow 10 speed. You can also live your childhood again through your layout. Let me know if you do this also. If you're modeling your layout to a specific year, I myself am doing 1963. Now, I wasn't born until 1968. Why would I choose a time before I was even born? Well, for me, this was before America got involved in the Vietnam War. And it seems like everything just kind of kind of turned to, turned bad back in the day. We were still riding the wave of the 50s, the good times. The World War II was over and everything was up and things were going well. And they didn't have planned obsolescence in, in their equipment that they, things last. They were built to last. They weren't trying to bilk you out of all your money. People weren't used to consumerism yet because it had just barely been invented. Now, it wasn't great for everybody. I mean, you know, we could admit that, but there were some good times, simpler, slower times. So that's what I reflect on as an imaginary time on my layout that existed before I was even born. I was just wondering if there's other guys out there that do that too. Lived out in the suburbs of Denver when I was younger, and then we moved out here to Montana. So I've always lived around mountains. You know, I could, I could literally drive to Yellowstone Park in about three hours. So to me, it's more impressive to see Flatland, Kansas, North Dakota. That's why I don't, I, I don't need to model any mountains on my, because it's like they're, you know, they're, I look out the window, I see mountains. I want a small, rural America, Midwestern town is what I'm working on modeling. Very specific um kind of poor maybe a little poor we don't need no la or new york city because they're in the movies so i you know i've seen them enough that's kind of the motivation behind this here daviston just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what this is about and all the other subsequent layouts that i build will be about that too you know what we haven't done yet is classic model trains this week's classic model do you guys know who this is if you do Put it in the comments down below or tell me if what era your railroad is you're modeling what year is it specific to you oh and if you don't know who this is stick around to the end i'll let you know in a subtitle down below in this area right here we should get back into it because i've yammered on enough now and why does the tender have these pickups on it why is it it's kind of heavy should we get in there and see what's in there i don't know I, that did nothing. Lock tabs right there on the side. Get half of it out on one side, half of it out on the other side. What is that? Why? It's, oh, it's got a, it's got a light. Why? The light's at the back. Oh, well, would you look at there? That's pretty fancy. Pretty fancy indeed. I heard these smoking units can get so hot they deform the smokestack right here. And it looks like this one has done some deforming on it. it certainly has. This thing is heavy, heavy, heavy. This is going to be one of the easiest ones to ser service ever. I want to clean these wheels. I'm going to put that cover back on to do it. So let's just get a little oil on these axles right here. Just a touch, just a little bit, just a little peck, a little bit more than not enough. And I can't see really anything else to do in there. We can get some of the super lube out. Put just a little touch on this gear since we're just down here right now. We'll get some on that top worm when we get up to the top side. 
I want to get this back on though to keep this from just falling apart all over the place. Second one right there. Get the old fiberglass pencil out and we can decorate up these wheels. It was this one here that does the picking up and the one behind it. So it's got a four wheel pickup. I guess we can just clean them all because we're here anyway. And I want to get to the other side because I'm going to do half. So I guess I'll sit here and spin this for 100 revolutions. We can also use this time to get some grease on the worm gear. Okay, here we go. Now we can get the other half. Wheels are clean. There's a lot of room in here where a person could DCC this thing in a heartbeat. You know, if you're if you're into that kind of thing. Put the plastic in the put the lower boiler shell in the upper boiler and then put it all together like that. Yes, that worked much better. This one goes back here. Front pilot spring. Front pilot. And then it's got this shoulder bolt. Back here, it doesn't have that. Shoulder bolt, but there's a, there's no spring. Smooth, yeah. Well, I hope the light and the smoker still works. I wanna see if this light bulb, if it's directional LED, I doubt it, that looks like an incandescent and it's just always on whenever there's track power. Let's check this out and see what it does. You gotta put like full coal and then it'll kind of work. It's not picking up real well. We need to clean all those wheels. The pickup's on there. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. And this, the wick is twisted almost all the way. 10 volts, and that's what we're getting. There's full send. Hey, this is a nice locomotive. Let's clean those pickups up. Well, I took the old fiberglass pencil after the wheels that are doing the pick em ups. Took a Q tip and kind of wiped the dirt out from underneath of the pickups and the axles. I'm going to go one more, and I'm going to put just the tiniest little bit of this nasty black, get all over the place, premium conductive grease underneath, right there. So as these things spin, see how it just made that, this will keep the rust down, corrosion, because we've got phosphorus bronze wipers up against these, what may be nickel silver axles, with juice flowing through them. So I'm just kind of hoping to give it all the help I can. And then of course you don't want to put your fingers in that because it's, you will track it everywhere. Uh-huh. Check that and see if it's got any better lighting on it. So when it's sitting there, it's got really good pickup. And when it's going slow, of course, but when you give it a, a full send, it goes, it goes dim. Interesting. Better than it was. This thing really gets along pretty dang good, I have to say. Quiet, Shh, listen. Wow, huh? I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go stand in line and buy some more of these Mahanos. That's a nice one. Looks silly without its tender. Let's see if I can throw some of this down its yap and let's see if the smoker smokes. That'd be, oh, well. Now it's just, now it's just a big bubble on top of it. Huh. Well, that was disappointing. I thought I'd be able to really fill her up. And look at this, the headlight even works on it. it just doesn't get any better. I got so dang excited to run this thing, I forgot to grease up all the linkages. I was running it around and it was dry, probably dry, holy. So if you see, if it moves, give it a little taste. Just helps extend the lifetime of it. Motor's hiding out here in the back. I didn't give it any love either. Put just a little pucker right on the end of that shaft right there. Yep. Don't forget the wheels. Your lead truck and your trailing truck, they need a little loving, loving too. Gosh, I can't believe I did that. I always like to try to research these things and see see what year they were, what, what can I find out about them. I got these two catalogs right here. This AHM one was sent in from Dave Hoover up there in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, I always blow that, it's hard to say. This one here, this is an IHC. This one came from Nick's Trains at a rally, North Carolina. These seem to focus on the River Rossi imports. 
is what I've noticed in them. I was trying to look up this specific um, Hano Mikado and uh, no. The closest I got to it was this one right here, production of 1993, because this motor right here looks like the motor that's in it. And this motor that's over here on these runs from 1989 look like the River Rossi ones with the two brushes that poke in on the back side. You know what I mean? Went on to the eBay, because the eBay, they'll tell you, and the eBay always just says they're AHMs. AHM did not ever make anything. They just imported it and branded it as their own. Same with IHC. IHC is actually a reincarnation of AHM because AHM went horribly bankrupt due to, I don't know, corruption, <laughs> fraud, uh, incompetence, something, something just, <laughs> it nosedived. Anyway, while well, I'm on the, on the eBay, I noticed this guy here. He's trying to sell this Riverasi. Exact same number. 3360 and I look at it and I look at it and then I look at the he's pictured the bottom of it and it even says that it's made in Slovenia uh no River River Ossi's in Italy and Mahano Technica is out in former Yugoslavia or Slovenia they they, they broke they different states now I don't sorry I don't know my world history very well so I did the right thing and I wrote this guy a little note on the eBay, let him know that, hey, that you need to change that because Mahano's sell for about 45 to 50 bucks, this steam locomotive. And Redbox River Aussies go for a, a lot more, a lot more. And somebody's gonna be bent out of shape if they find that. So if you get a chance to find one of these Mahano ones, they, I think it's a really good locomotive. It is amazing. Let's take a look at it all put together, pull in a little load, up and down the track. It, it came out really nice. Let's see how well she does with a little load of cars here. Normally it doesn't get moving until about five volts. You can kind of hear it still grinding along over there. Nope, four volts, it's a done done. Yeah, that's it for no real super slow speed. But it is doing a nice job pulling some coal cars here. I don't have a great northern caboose to put on the back of it, so I don't know what to do. Put the wrong one on. Should put something on, huh? I did the right thing and I waited until five o'clock when the traffic was as busy as it possibly could on the interstate before I decided to close this fantastic video out. This little Mahano was sitting in the storage shelves for a good half a year before I decided to do something with it. I should have pulled it out a long time ago. Thought about maybe throwing a DCC decoder in it. I'm not sure if should we do DCC stuff or not. It'd be super easy. I can show you how to do it. I just, what do you guys think? Throw it out there. We're down here to the 33 percenters with us at the end of the video. Had a blast with you. You guys tell me what you think. You want to see? You want to see us throw some DCC stuff in some classic steamers? You know, DCC is old enough to be classic. It's it's like 25 to 30 years old now, I believe. So <laughs> who knows? But I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Thanks for stopping in. Bye bye.